Hello everyone, Ron again, and in this video, we're going to try to actually have me in the video. <laughs> but also, we're going to talk about Mix Assistant and Neutron 4. Now in the last video, you can see the itinerary right here. I was talking about audio lens and tonal balance control too, because the purpose of this series is to explain the isotope workflow. So it's not so much going into what the plugins do, so much as how they relate to one another and how you use them together. So if you stick around to the end of the video, you'll have a fairly thorough understanding of that in the way that Isotope intends you to use their workflow. So let's get into it. First of all, Neutron 4 is obviously the fourth iteration of Neutron and it's the newest one at the time of recording. The purpose of Neutron is for you to fix up individual mix elements that are not your voice because the plugin that is created for vocals by Isotope is called Nectar. So you can see here all of these different instruments and the different symbols. Now, obviously, if you've seen Ozone, then you know about Master Assistant and you know it's an assistant that helps you to master. That's clear, right? So Mix Assistant obviously is an assistant that helps you to mix using AI. And there are two ways that that can be done. The first way is if you click this right here when you open Neutron 4, it's going to run Mix Assistant and it's going to tell you to play audio. For the sake of CPU, because you can see the CPU over here already like really high, I did it already because if I did it while the video was recording me, then it would buffer and it would sound bad. And that's just not what I want. But I want to talk about the relationship between audio lens, tonal balance control, mix assistant, and Neutron 4. So in the last video, I was talking about somewhere how you can use audio lens and you can take the curves of audio that is playing throughout the system. And the purpose of that is to help you mix later. But I was focusing mainly on the entire track. However, Isotope has seen fit to make it so that audio lens is installed and is wired in such a way that I could take all of these different tracks or audios that I've captured and I could use their tonal curves on individual instruments too. So that is what you're witnessing here. So I could go all purpose, choose an instrument, right? Usually when you run this, it's going to try to detect what type of audio is hearing. And you could use it on vocals, but Nectar is better because Nectar has two EQs and two compressors. And it also has reverb and a lot of different stuff. I'll cover that when we get to like that video. Anyway, so if I go down this list, you can see all of the different things. And these are all different EQ curves or different tonal balance curves because Neutron wants to know how you want to balance out the sound. And these down here are the ones that I captured in audio lens. So this is the tonal curve that would be on the entire song. I could put it on individual mix elements. And it's pretty cool because Neutron 4 is modular also. So you can see that when you run the mix assistant, it does put the different things that it believes that the track can use and you can go here and you can increase the amount. So if I want it to be more distorted, I'd increase this. Punch involves compression. And width is obviously stereo imaging. So let's actually just look at what it did. If I play from right here, this is on the hi-hat. So if you listen carefully, you can see that the tonal curves are changing the sound as I, as I click them individually. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to click through them as it's playing back the audio. And then you'll be able to see that it changes the tone to match more closely to this curve. And it's even got a mix knob on the top. Now something to be aware of if you use FL Studio is that it introduces latency. So when it introduces latency, what you want to do is hover over the plugin. And you'll see in the top left hand corner that right now it says the latency is 47.23 milliseconds. And then you go down here to the bottom of the track click this set in milliseconds and type the same number that's up there. So that's why when I hover over track latency, it says 48 milliseconds because Neutron 4 and plugins like it are kind of CPU hogs and it causes the track to have latency because they do so much processing in real time that the computer takes more time to do it. So in this case, it takes 48 more milliseconds, but it's a noticeable difference if I was to reset it. So check it out. This is a problem that you should be aware of. So you can see that that fixes that. I felt that that's something that you should be aware of if you're using this. So now in the same packages with Neutron 4, and with Mix Assistant are, is Relay. So Relay is the next one we're gonna tackle and I'm gonna delete this in the hopes of saving some CPU. So we're gonna look at Relay and at Mix Assistant or rather the Visual Mixer, which really is the Mix Assistant now together. So what you do when you use Relay and you use Audio Lens and you use Mix Assistant is you want to put a relay on every channel that you want the Visual Mixer to help you mix. And the Visual Mixer is separated. It's separated from Neutron 4. I believe that in Neutron 3 that it still was separated, but Mix Assistant was inside of Neutron 3 itself. Now Mix Assistant is inside of the, the visual mixer. So if you see, look over here, I have relays on every track and that one has a Neutron 4 equalizer for a reason I'll explain in a minute. So each track has a relay. So the intended use of relay is, now I'm not gonna put relay on the buses, you know, so you wouldn't want to do that. You want to put relay on the individual mix elements because it does some of the same functions as Neutron 4, but it is not so CPU intensive. The cool thing about Neutron 4 is that the entire plugin is called the mothership, but it is able to be broken down into the individual parts so you can save CPU on it. And all of them have inter plugin communication so they can detect one another in the mix like in the same instance of this project. So when I go to the visual mixer, I'm going to put that onto the track where all the audio is being fed. And when I hit mix assistant, something similar to what I was talking about with track assistant will happen where it's going to tell you to play audio. Now what's important for this is that you have to let it listen to the entire thing. So for, for the sake of this video, I did it already, <laughs> you know, because obviously I'm not going to play the entire thing. But you can see that I can choose any track that I want. And this Nectar that's right here is actually my voice. So it can even detect Nectar, it can detect Neutron, and the other plugins can be aware of Ozone too, which we'll cover in a different video. But what you can do here is if I move them to the right, I can pan them. And these are the tracks that have Relay or Neutron or Nectar. So 
I can pan it left, I can pan it right. This is to turn it up and turn it down. Double click, it goes back to default. And if I pull these out, it gets wider. And if I push them in, it gets more mono. And all of those are the functions that are on Relay. But when you have the visual mixer, the mix assistant will mix them to the proper levels that it believes they should be at for you. And the way that Isotope intends this, you can see most of these knobs or mixer faders, I haven't moved them. They intend you to leave them at Unity, which is where they start off. But I decided not to do that because it was kind of annoying trying to get it precisely where I wanted it. And if you've seen my video on gain staging, then you know that that's actually what the mixer knobs are intended for. So yeah, like I said, there's a relay on every one of those. Mix Assistant is mixing them to the gain where they should be. And then you can go in and you can accept it or you can reject it and you can change it yourself. And if you press plus up here, you can have different snapshots of it. And let's say I want to move this and I want to compare them. Then I can see where it was in each snapshot. So yeah, that is the entire purpose of using the visual mixer. And as I said, with audio lens, audio lens is going to capture some type of audio that has a tonal curve. Neutron 4 is able to reflect that tonal curve onto individual instruments. And Relay and Neutron 4 allow you to use Visual Mixer and of course each other to detect what the other tracks are doing and even to control them. So I'll show you one more thing. I mentioned the Neutron 4 Equalizer. I have to find it. Here it is. So the other way that these things are intended to be used is that you have this masking feature and because they can detect each other, they can tell you which ones are masking each other. So let's say if I put a relay on another track, then this track can detect it. And then I can use the masking parameter to figure out where it's masking to bring more clarity. And this was the track where I actually did it. So what I did was to sidechain the attack kick to this track. You can see, if you look at the bottom, that the kick is sidechained to the bass. And that is to create clarity in the mix. So when you're in FL Studio, the audio goes through the Fruity Wrapper. So you gotta go to Processing, right click the Stereo Aux In, choose the track, you should turn this on. And then, hopefully when you open it up, <laughs> you can choose, you can choose to sidechain a track like this and then every time when the other track plays after you have selected it and done all that, then this Neutron will duck. So you can see here that it's not doing anything, but this is a dynamic EQ note. So if I play the track, then when the kick plays, the bass will duck so that you can hear the kick and they will not clash. And this sensitivity meter will show you where they are masking each other so you can know where to do it. So you can see that when the kick is playing, this note ducks, but other than that, it leaves the bass intact. So all in all, the purpose of Neutron 4 is to bring clarity to all of the individual instrument tracks in the context of a mix and the mix assistant that comes with it, which is inside the visual mixer, is purposed to help you 
by setting your mix at the correct levels and it allows you to pan all of the instruments in one place. So that is the way that you use Neutron 4. And again, just so you don't forget, when you have the mothership loaded, you can use the tonal balance curves that you capture from audio lens on individual tracks to change the tone of something in the mix. And the idea behind the mothership is that it's going to, it's going to get the track to like that instrument to where it believes it should be to make it sound really good. And it's actually very useful because the difference between Nectar and Neutron is that Nectar has two EQs, it has two compressors, and it has different other things, like it has pitch correction, things that you will use on vocals, it has reverb. Neutron has two compressors, it has only one EQ, but that one EQ has 12 bands. And they all can become dynamic. But another key thing is that if I was to go go to the Neutron 4 equalizer. When you bypass, you don't have game match. But Nectar does. So if I bypassed it on my voice, I could game match it to see how it sounds before and after and remain objective because one of them will be louder. So you should make them the same volume so that you don't fool yourself. Yeah, and with that being said, that's pretty much all to cover. And with that, you should have a thorough understanding of how you will use audio lens, how you will use Neutron 4, how you will use Tonal Balance Control 2, and how you will use Relay, and to some extent even Nectar, and how they all work together to, to give you a good mix. That's the entire point. And I hope that this video was able to help you like comment and subscribe. I'm certain that I'm going to leave another video right here that you should check out, which I'm sure will be the first one that was like before this click on that. And that will help you to understand the things that I said in the beginning about audio lens, because this is a series, you know, and it will help me out as well. And with that, regardless of what you do, I hope that you have an awesome day. And thank you for watching. Peace.